There are many new devices that we can talk about in this setup. However, I'm going to focus on this Calibrite Display Plus HL, the newest flagship colorimeter in Calibrite lineup. I'll go over what's in the box along with the new features and capabilities and how does this device compare with the other in the lineup. Because these new HL devices are now capable of profiling mini LED displays, I'm going to demo this on my 14-inch MacBook Pro with the Liquid Retina XDR display. I know many of us have been waiting for this feature and I'm really looking forward to this. So let's find out together, this is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Calibrite launched a new colorimeter lineup with every device receiving a new sensor that's more capable of profiling current display technologies and future emerging ones. If you already own or use a Calibrite colorimeter, these new devices will feel very familiar. The form factor is exactly the same as the previous generation with the exception of a new color, the device name on the outside, and most importantly, the new sensor on the inside. These new devices all come with a USB Type-C connector. Included in the box is a USB Type-C to USB Type-A adapter along with a pouch for transporting and safekeeping of your colorimeter. The box is smaller compared to previous generation and all of the internal packaging material are now fully recyclable paper, no more plastic. A great move for the environment that I am happy to see. There are three new devices in this lineup. Display Plus HL, which is the one that I have, Display Pro HL, and Display SL. I'll go over the key differences between these devices so you can choose the best one for your current and future workflow needs. I'll leave links to the comparison in the description as well. Let's start with their abbreviation. HL stands for High Luminance and SL, Standard Luminance. There are two HL models, the Display Plus HL and Display Pro HL. If you have or plan to get a mini LED backlight display, such as the Liquid Retina XDR inside the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, both M1 and M2 generation, or the Apple Pro Display XDR, then you have to choose one of these two devices to profile these display. The SL version is unable to profile these type of backlight. In addition, the Plus HL will work with display that can go up to as bright as 10,000 nits compared to 3,000 nits in the Pro HL and 1,000 nits in the Display SL. When it comes to video, if you prefer to use BT1886 Gamma Curve, you would have to choose the Plus HL because other devices in the lineup lacks this Gamma Curve capability. And when it comes available, only the Display Plus HL will be able to profile in HDR. Another key factor is third-party software compatibility. I have BenQ Newest SW272U 27-inch 4K hardware calibrated display in this setup. If you have or plan to get a BenQ SW series, then you would have to choose the Display Plus HL or Display Pro HL for it to be compatible with BenQ Newest Palette Master Ultimate or Palette Master Element software. Display SL version will not work with any third-party software. And lastly, the Plus HL and Pro HL will have support for standalone display validation inside Calibrite Profiler, whereas the SL version would lack this capability. With these key differences behind us, let's profile this Liquid Retina XDR display inside my laptop. Remember, there are many OS features that must be disabled before the profiling process. With Mac, there are three major interface changes with the different Mac OS version. I'll have links to these guides separate by the Mac OS version in the description. In addition, Apple Pro Displays, which includes the Liquid Retina XDR inside the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, Apple Pro Display XDR, and also Apple Studio Display, all comes with reference mode features. And there are many nuances to this. I'll leave a link to my reference mode guide in the description as well. I recommend that you watch both of these before you start the profiling process to get the best result possible. Now, let's jump right in and run a display profiling. What I'm going to do first is plug in my Display Plus HL into the laptop. And this makes it super easy because it's a USB Type-C, no more adapters. I'll launch Calibrite Profiler software and we'll wait for it to fully populate and launch up. 
A few things to note as well is that I have gone in and changed and turned off all these settings already. In addition, I have put this display into photography luminance mode or photography reference mode with a luminance of 100. So for this, I am going to choose to profile my display using the advanced mode and also the Calibrite Display plus HL is already selected there. I will click on next. For this, something to pay attention to, especially if you are profiling this laptop, you have to choose the backlight technology. By default, it will go to WLED or white LED, and you have to come in and choose mini LED because if you do not do that, the gamut for the ICC profile that you get from these display would still conform to sRGB like the previous generation devices. So with that, I have selected mini LED. I am going to choose photo for now and I will click on next. And this screen is going to take me to the measurement process right away. I'm not ready for that just yet. I'm going to change some of the parameters to match the reference mode I have set on the display. So I'm going to start out with the luminance. For the luminance, instead of 120, I have set mine to 100. So I'm going to select that. I will click on next. And I'll leave everything else by default. The contrast is going to be native. Gamma will be 2.2. I'll turn off ambient light auto adjust and also flare correct. Well, all the other settings about the profile, will leave them the same. As far as patch go, normally I recommend choosing 461. This way you can measure more patches to get a better sample set of data. But for the sake of this demonstration and for time, I'm going to choose 118 patches. And now we are ready to profile this display. I'll click on start measurement. It will ask me what parameter I can adjust. Technically, I can't even adjust the brightness because I am in a fixed reference mode, but I'm going to put that check mark anyway because it's going to give me a readout for my luminance. From there, what I would simply do is take the device, pull the cap over, and just rotate it so that this diffusion is facing the back of the device and the lens is exposed. Notice that on the front, there are felt lining very similar to the previous generation. And as long as this device is laying flat on the display, you can really profile in this bright environment. Another thing I also want to mention as well is there is a counterweight that's pretty much built into the lineup. You don't have to pull or tug or anything at all. There is a little groove there that you can just simply push. When you push, you can simply just pull the cable just like so. It doesn't take that much pressure at all and it won't damage the cable that you have. So for now, I am going to put the device on the display, adjust the counterweight just a touch, and also tilt the display back. Click on next, and the first thing it's going to do is measure the luminance. I've selected 100. This is in the reference mode, and it's showing me exactly 100 value, which is what I want it to have. And we're going to click on next. This is going to start the measurement process right away. One more thing I also want to mention as well is that this display has been running for more than 15 minutes already. So regardless of whichever display you have, you also want to leave it time for it to properly warm up. This is going to measure 118 patches and do some iterative profiling towards the end. We'll jump right back in, do some validation and wrap this up as far as this calibration device go and there'll be more videos that will be coming in the future, but I'll be back soon. All right, now that Calibrite profile have read the 118 patches, I am going to click on next. This is showing the actual color that were measured during the measurement process. I will click on next again, and this is the part where we would save the profile. For this, because I have tested this device a few times already, I am going to name this one the plus HL. I'll simply put it as that for now. And you can always go in and set the profile reminder because I'm doing so many testing on the software anyway. I am going to set mine to none, but I highly recommend that you go in and reprofile your display every two to four weeks or so to get the best and most accurate color possible. I will click on save. And there are many other comparisons that I can do the before and after, but what I'm going to do now is a validation on this profile. And simply enough, I'm going to choose Color Checker Classic 24 patches. I will click on next. The device is already in the right position and click on start measurement. If you don't do that, you will just be looking at the white circle and wondering why the program never starts. One other thing I also want to mention as well is that when it comes to these laptops with the Liquid Retina XDR display. I have done extensive guides on how to do a fine-tuned 
uh, calibration or white point fine tune on these displays. I am working on that new guide right now with the Calibrite Profiler and I'll have that release soon. All right, now that that's finished, I will click on next. And for this one, I am able to get an average for all the patches at 0.6. That's really good. On the highest of all the average, I'm getting around 1.8. And on the max, I'm getting 3.2. One thing to note about this profiling is that I did not do a fine-tuned calibration before I profiled this laptop display. I have done some tests with and without fine-tuned calibration, and I was able to get the max delta E to fall below three on the display with a fine-tuned calibration versus the one without. So there is some benefits still in really doing the fine-tuned calibration. In addition to this, what you can do is just simply click on finish. The profile has already been set. Now what I can simply do is go in and launch Color Sync Utility. I can verify what profile I have by clicking on the color LCD and this you can see it is the plus HL profile that I've just created. In addition, let's see how big the gamut is. So I'm going to pull in display P3 and set this as a reference to so hold for comparison. And what I'm going to do is simply go in and choose the display plus HL. This is the profile that I have just created. And with this, we're seeing a color gamut that's slightly smaller than P3. And this makes absolute perfect sense because Apple never publishes the amount of P3 gamut coverage for their displays. It's generally in the 90 something percent range, but we don't really know if it's really 95 or 99 percent. So getting something that's really slightly small like this just makes perfect sense. But what we're getting right now is a gamut that's really closer to the P3 conformity, and that's a great thing to see. Now, normally when you have to change the display profile or if you want to change those, you would have to go into Color Sync Utility, tap on the device tab at the top and choose the color LCD. From here, you would choose the different profile you want to use. Something that Calibrite have done in the latest version of their software is built in a profile manager. And profile manager is really cool because what you can simply do is go in and choose the display that you want to use and simply just go in and activate different profiles that you want to use with this display. For instance, if I want to go back to the one that I have done the profiling before, I just click on activate and it automatically goes in to Color Sync Utility and change that profile for me. I no longer have to go in and search the profile manually and everything. So this program, Calibrite Profiler, along with these new devices, are a really powerful tool, especially if you are a Mac user and especially if you have the Liquid Retina XDR display inside the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, because as I mentioned, we have been waiting for a very long time to profile display and now we can do it. So my overall recommendation is as follows. If you want to get a device that is going to be the best one possible, that sits at the very top, that's going to be future proof for new display technologies that are coming out and really bright displays, I recommend choosing the Display Plus HL. But if you're okay with lacking some of the capabilities, for example, not being able to use the BT1886 camera curve. You don't really care to profile displays that can go up to 10,000 nits, and you're not really going to profile the display in HDR. Then the Display Pro HL is another good device to consider as well. But if you are a pro, my recommendation is to choose one of the HL devices and just forget looking at the SL device because the pros HL and the Plus HL are going to give you much more capability. Anyway, I hope that you find this guide and overall review of this new device helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you're new. And in art we trust.